Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to go through some of the changelogs from the last few days. Most of them are talking about the Mad Thunder event and how they've changed it up. It's actually been really cool with the Mad Thunder event, how even though it's been out for less than a week, they've uh, really been trying to basically make it fun. And uh, this is not something we've seen a lot with previous April Fools, um, and I feel like that's because the crafting event was always attached to it, uh, at least, you know, of the previous years. So if they made some, like, grand crazy changes, especially on how you get resources, it would have really affected that system. But this time, it seems like they're focusing on fun and also getting people the stuff. So overall, this is a lot better than it started with. And even though the uh, start of the Mad Thunder event was pretty weak and pretty bad because of the whole extraction system and because of many of the other systems, right now, less than a week on, it's in a much better place and a lot more fun to play. And I would highly recommend giving it a go just because they've changed how all that stuff works. So to start off with, we have update 2.35.1.31, which came out yesterday. And uh, what they ended up doing is the color differences have been added to the Mad Thunder event loop models to make it easier to visually distinguish the different types of resources. So basically, they change the color of things so they all have their own distinct color, therefore it's easier to see. So unless you're colorblind, this is great because it'll be easier for you to distinguish what's kind of going around, especially when it comes to the ground. All of the different kind of models have their own visual looks and they all look uh, slightly different different from each other which is really nice but also at the same time it's a little bit harder to see um, especially if you're just running over them now for me I'm in a position where all I need now is armor and also rage uh, so I'm specifically looking for armor instead of anything else and yeah it can be a little bit annoying not getting uh, the part but what I'm actually just focusing on is getting the rage and then kind of uh, going from there once I get the rage, which seems to be the um, resource which you need the most, on top of armor as well, if you want to get all of the uh, all of the prizes, uh, that is, you know, um, that will be quite easy to get. Areas of the Forgotten Lands event map uh, where you could get stuck have been fixed as well. So uh, there was quite a few rocks which you could get like stuck behind or stuck on. And I feel like they've uh, tried to improve that little area. And also in the team battle mode, the enemy team's extraction zones have been given an out of bounds area until the arrival of the sandstorm. Where when this happens, all extraction zones become available to both teams, which is a minute 30 left on the map. I think this is a really powerful change and uh, generally makes it a lot better. The issue uh, with the way that uh, it actually worked is obviously people were just extract camping, which uh, sucks. Even with the changes where you keep resources, it's still at the end of the day sucks, but this is a lot better compared to what uh, we saw um, previously. So I think overall this is uh, a much better system. It stops spawn camping and also they changed the part of the map in the top left so you can't go there and just kind of sit there and kill everything which is around. So overall the, the problem that was there they have tried to solve in many different ways and therefore have lessened the problem in general. So I think the changes that they've made to the event have made it a lot better and um, it's a lot less tarkov -y, or it's a lot less Division-y now and much more just about, you know, destruction and gathering resources and having a bit of fun. And for me, that's good. That's what, you know, this event should be about. I know a lot of people talked about the fact uh, that for them, uh, they felt like this event was a bit grindy and it wasn't, you know, as good. And, oh, there's no vehicle which is, you know, available, so therefore why bother with it? Well, because it's fun. And fun is one of those things which is very important in War Thunder. We can't just get stuck in the grind all the time because that usually leads to burnout. For me, as an individual, I enjoy grinding stuff and, you know, opening up stuff and getting things like that. And that is where I get my enjoyment from. But also, I understand that that's not everybody. Everybody has to have their little hook that they enjoy and for others it will be the fact that it's just fun going around and you know shooting people, gathering resources and doing that type of thing. And it's nice that they're actually 
pushing towards that type of player so people can enjoy it a lot more. They did it in like the Enlisted Zombie stuff. By the way, they've extended the Enlisted Zombie stuff, so give it a go. It's really fun and you can get some cool rewards out of it. But yeah, just give it a go and hopefully they can continue extending it. Also, with the Black Prince, they fixed this neutral steering. So when they changed uh, the transmission, I believe it was, in the Black Prince, uh, where they made it go backwards faster or go forwards faster, uh, they ended up breaking its neutral steering. It's now sorted, so you don't have to worry about it. It now is fully functioning. And then in update 2.35.1.34, um, <laughs> on the 5th of April, a lot more Mad Thunder changes to try and improve uh, the game mode once again. So the Strong Rhino and the Powerful Rhino, which was definitely the vehicles to go for if you're trying to get Rage, the accuracy of the gun stabilization when moving at high speed has been reduced, uh, which means that you'll have to be a bit more stable with the vehicle. I think that's probably pretty good. As I said, the Powerful Rhino was very hard to not get five Rage in unless you get caught out by a bunch of other vehicles, but it was very easy to use. The Porcupine, also the number of rounds in the 20mm belt, has been increased from 75 to 100, and the rate of fire has been increased to 840 from 600, and the recoil has been reduced. The Porcupine is one of those interesting things. So here, I'll, I'll show you my strat for getting rage, right? So I spawn in the powerful ball, uh, I go to the center of the map, I try and kill people with the recoilless and also with the 23s since the 23s are really, really good. You know, um, the 23s, uh, because of their accuracy and their muzzle velocity, you can just absolutely cane people so easily. So do that and then get some rage points and then spawn in the powerful rhino. Do the same thing, but sit back a little bit on the hill and then just shoot down and, you know, donk people with the napalm and, well, the hesh, which is also napalm. You can actually kill people with the fire, which is quite fun. I killed a bunch of echidnas with it. And then when I ended up getting the rage in that and dying, then um, I would spawn in the porcupine, uh, use the rage detector uh, to be able to have a look around, because at that point there's usually quite a lot of people who are dead. So then I would just go around those bodies with the porcupine, uh, usually with the one with the flamethrower, just because I think it looks cool. Not because it's useful, it's pretty useless. They have actually increased uh, <laughs> its damage now. Um, the damage dealt by fire has been doubled uh, with the porcupine. But yeah, so I would go around in that, get the rage in that and then if I died and there was still time left I'd mule it up and I'd get the mule since by then there's probably not many people left on either team so go in the mule try and get the rage points but also at the same time gather all the resources that everybody has dropped around the map and that is basically the strategy that has got me 10 to 20 rage points pretty much every game for the last few days uh, so yeah that's that that's how at least I've found it useful. I'm sure the people have found better ways. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use the Reptile. Not a huge fan of the Reptile, just because it's easy to kill the gunner, but say la vie. Uh, also, a mission objectives button has been added to the event window, so you can view the mission objective in the hangar as well, which is nice. And also, there was a bug that caused the message, vehicle of the chosen crew mismatches the vehicle available at the mission start, you cannot take it to display, preventing the player from respawning in a vehicle that has been fixed. I actually had that bug as well, which uh, very much sucked. There was a resource icons in the Mad Thunder progression menu have been replaced with easy to understand and minimalistic icons that also match the ones displayed on the minimap in the battle. So it's much easier to understand what you need instead of having to hover over and work out which one, uh, which is each one. It's very simple now, which is fantastic. And also a bug that caused the mission objectives window to stretch on ultra wide monitors has been fixed, which is nice. And also a bug that caused the rage scanner to show extracted players has been fixed. The rage scanner sometimes doesn't just show extracted players. It also just shows ones which don't have any rage on them. And I'm wondering if it's something about how it takes like a picture of when you spawn and then you hit the button and that's what it shows you and then halfway through you know if if some of the rage has been collected it doesn't like automatically refresh um I, maybe that's the case but i don't know it just seems a little bit odd that it's not always fully there then also a bug that caused the out of bounds alert message to display behind the resource bar causing it to be unreadable has been fixed too they also fixed uh, a bug with the steam overlay 
because uh, it couldn't open uh, in the game that's been fixed. Uh, we actually had a bit of an issue uh, with that yesterday with a few of the guys, and also a bug where it was not possible to click anything on the Steam overlay in some cases has been fixed too. So overall, quite nice uh, to see those fixed. For me, what I'm going to do today is I think I'm going to get the uh, good old uh, Mad Thunder done. I only need like maybe 100 rage or you know, maybe 150 rage, something like that, so it shouldn't be too bad. And also record the tech talk, so it's a bit of a dumb whammy on stream today. Hopefully you guys can enjoy the Mad Thunder event, hopefully you can, you know, get through it and have a bit of fun. But as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.